In this video, I want to show you how to use the copy to clipboard action, this one right here, and I'll show you five common great use cases for it. But before that, let me give you three design principles to use when you're adding this action. The first one is use a copy to clipboard icon. That is ones like this. And this is because unless you tell your user that when you click on that thing, it will copy it to the clipboard, they won't know. In design, this is called an affordance. This is what like handles on doors are. It tells you that you can interact with this thing. And the most common icon for that is this one or some variation of that. So use an icon so your users know. Second, when you're adding the action, don't add it on the icon itself. Have a very generous tap target. That is, you don't necessarily want to add the action on an icon like this, but move up in the widget hierarchy and add it to higher widgets in the hierarchy. That is, instead of this icon here, I would add it to the whole row. And that's because your users are interacting with this with their fingers. And you don't normally know exactly where your finger hits the phone. So in design, we call this designing for error or forgiveness, being generous. This is what back buttons are. But here, you want to have a generous target. You can also add in a bunch of white space. So so add in padding so that even if the user hits outside of it, it will still trigger the action. Or when you have a lot of tappable things in a row, make sure there's no empty gutters in between. And so the action will be triggered by whatever widget they're closest to. And finally, add a snack bar or some other type of indication to your user after they've copied it to the clipboard. This is like the other side or the completion of the cycle of the affordance. You're indicating that you can interact with something and once it's happened, you're telling your user, you have it in your clipboard now. These are good ways to tell your users what's going on with your app. Okay, so let's get into these five good use cases. The first one is just the simple use case of copying something like text. So we've got some text right here and we don't wanna add it to the icon like we said. So we've got this stack element right here. So let's add the action to that. And so we go into the action flow editor and let's add a copy to clipboard command. And it gives us two options. We can put in a specific value or a value from variable. We'll get to that in a second. Let's just put in the specific text to see how this works. So we can come back over to our text widget. Let's copy in that text, go back to our stack and paste in the value and that's it. Now, in order to test this, you currently have to publish to web because of a current limitation in the clipboard API that should be fixed soon. But just come over to your settings, make sure that the platform web is enabled and then come down to web publishing and publish. All right, so here's our app and there's nothing on our clipboard right now. And if we come in and copy and paste it, we've got copy and paste. All right, let's look at our second use case, which is copy and pasting for different formats. So let's go back to our app. So often there will be a difference between what you display and what you would actually want to copy to a clipboard. So here we've got a date, but maybe instead of this format of date, you want a different format. So we can do that. Just come into here, add our copy to clipboard, and then just specify the format you want. And of course, you could put this through a code expression or custom function to automate this. Another use case is when you want to truncate something, either just show an icon or part of it, like in our text example here. So you could have notes that you copy, or maybe you just have a phone icon, but you want to make it copyable. Those are good use cases too. All right, so we've seen a lot of copying using the specific value, but when would you use from a variable? The two most common ways you're gonna use copying from a variable is when you're copying from a query, from a database, or from a parameter. And I'll show you both of those. So here I've got a column and it has a backend query on it. It's just a super base with a bunch of users, emails. So these children are dynamically generated. So in this case, if I go to the row and I can add an action, our copy to clipboard action, 
from a variable and we can see right here this emails row is from that backend query and so if we twirl it open we'll be able to see all of the fields that we have access to and so if we just add the email now when we look at this on our web publish we can see all our emails and if we want to copy bill for instance let's paste that in and we can see that that's on the clipboard. Now the other scenario, let's go back into Flutterflow, is say we've got these list of users or employees or something. And instead of copying them right here, maybe we click on it and we go into their profile page. So let's get rid of this on tap and let's just add a navigate action. And I've got this profile page set up and I'll show you that. So here's our profile page. So the idea is that you have a list of these users, you click in and then whatever you click in will show the information for that user. Now, how does this page get those? Well, it gets those through parameters. And whenever you're using parameters, remember that you have to do two things. You have to pass the parameter. So on the first page, you have to throw it. You've got to send it. And then you need to have a catcher on the page where you're going. So this page right here. And you can set it up in any order you want. So we're on this profile page here. Let's just set up the parameters here. So we're going to want a bunch of data, right? So we've got the email here, name, image. And here's a trick. If you're getting a bunch of data, you don't want to set up individual parameters, you know, the name, the email, but you want to send the whole document or Supabase row. Those are equivalent things. They just have different names because they're different types of databases. So here we're using Supabase. So let's come in and look for our Supabase row, and we can just call this user and specify the table. We've only got one, so that's fine. So now in this whole page, we have access to all of our users details. So we can come into our email here, but remember we wanna go up to our highest level in the hierarchy that we can to do our copying. And we can add our action, copy, copy to clipboard from a variable. And here we've got our page parameters of user and so we click on that and now we can specify which field in our database do we want to copy to our clipboard. Well, we here we want our email so we can just confirm that and there we go. But of course, we just set up our catcher here, right? We got to send this data when we click on it. So let's go back to our home page here and in our row we set up and this is found in our navigation action because when we're navigating to that page, Along with that navigation, we want to send the data about that user. Now, if we haven't set that up, the catcher on the other page, we can define it here, but we've already defined it, so we don't have to do that. We can just pass it, and we can see that it recognizes it. That's the user. That's the name we gave to that parameter. So we can just twirl it open, and we can see that the type that it's expecting, what kind of data is it expecting us to send? Well, user data. So let's click in here, and when we hover over here, we can see, oh, this is the emails row, and we want to send the super base row. That is the whole information about the user. We're not just sending like the email or the image URL. Beautiful. So let's finish binding this data and then we'll test it out. All right, so we've got our list here. Let's click into Jane. There she is. And let's copy that. And there it is. The next use case is a list of something. Here, we've got a list of employees that, that the user can copy when they select them. So let me give you an example and then I'll show you how it's set up. So maybe I want John and Jane right here. I can select them and when I copy them and paste it in, I've got these emails that of course I could use to paste into my email client. Let me show you how this is set up. So I've got a list view here that's coming from a super base call that I can show you right here. It's just a table of emails. And then on my copy button right here, we've got our copy to clipboard action and then we're passing it through a code expression. And that's because we're passing in right here the widget state of our checkboxes. So if we look in here, we're grabbing our checked items. And you can see the type right here. It's a list of rows from our database that have emails in them. And we're mapping through those and just getting the emails out of there. So we've got a list of emails that we're passing into this code expression. And then what we're getting out is we're getting a string. 
not a list, just a simple string, because once we get those emails, we're just calling the join method. This is just a built-in Dart function that grabs all of the items in that email list and puts a comma in between. So we're just getting a comma separated list of emails. And so that's an easy way to grab a list of items. Another use case would be with images. Let me show you. So here I've got a little coffee page and I've got a header image up here. And of course we've got our copy to clipboard icon. And what I could add on here was an action that copies the URL of this image to my clipboard. This can be useful for images that you wanna share with people, but maybe you don't wanna copy the whole image. Lastly, maybe you have some colors. You could use copy to clipboard and grab the color values out of those colors. Once again, this falls under the theme of when there's a difference between what you would wanna display and what your users would want to actually share or copy to their clipboard. We'd love to hear if you have any good uses for copy to clipboard and let us know if you're struggling with anything with it. Thanks for checking out the video and we'll see you in the next one.